Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a quick uh, tutorial on how to perform some spatial analysis in QGIS. I'm sure most of you know about QGIS, but if you don't, today is a good opportunity for you to know and learn how to use QGIS in this basic form. Uh, this tutorial is powered by NERVS, a technology startup that specializes in the unique combination of spatial data with advanced analytics to support decision making in a number of sectors so quickly um, we're going to i'm going to launch my qgis um, you can easily download qgis by just typing it on google and um, the url will be provided to you um, i'm going to be using qgis 3.26 which is the one with one of the stable versions um, available to download uh, but you can use any version in itself. Um, the tutorial is not specifically tailored towards uh, one version of QGIS. So once this loads, um, we're going to quickly get started. And just to let you know, I'm going to be using two data sets that I've downloaded already on my computer. And uh, I'll put the link in the chat for you to access those data sets, which are publicly available. Um, to start a QGIS, this is the interface of QGIS. Um, to start to launch a QGIS project, you just need to uh, first things first, either click on empty here or come to this point and create a new project. Once you create a new project, it gives you like a blank screen like this. This is the map canvas. If you can see my mouse, uh, this is the layers and these are processing tools. And well, this is a browser. Oh, a uh, folder browser within QGIS. Um, I'm not going to talk so much about all the various tools and functions that you can do in QGIS for today. So um, apologies if you don't understand some of the tools that you are seeing on the screen right now. We're probably going to cover that in another tutorial. But for today, the few tools I'm going to be using, I'm going to be explaining them as best as I can. So for you to, once you've launched your QGIS and you've opened a new document or a new project, uh, as I showed you using this two uh, new project or, or using Control N as a shortcut, um, the next step is for you to add your data sets. So I'm going to be adding my data set using Control L or this button as you can see right here. So once I click on it, um, it gives me the data source manager. Um, and I have various options of the kind of data set I can add. These are a list of the types of data set you can add. Uh, but first things first, I'm going to add a vector data set for administrative boundary. And because I've pre-downloaded that, on geo boundaries which is on a link in the chat link um i've downloaded um, nigeria admin one boundary from geo boundaries i'm easily going to load it in so when you double click on it uh i downloaded it as a shape file so once you click on the shape file all of these are supporting files for this specific shape file but the one you load specifically and must have a .shp, which is uh, defined as a shape file in the spatial world. So once you click on that, um, click on open, QGIS is going to put all the relevant settings for you and the URL parts. And you click on, all you just need to do is click on add. Once you click on add, it adds it. Assuming everything goes on fire, it adds it to your to your data to your data frame, uh, and you click on close. So you can see right here that number one, it's in your layer panels, and also in your view screen, in your visual visual interface screen, you can see the extent or the shape extent of Nigeria. So. This is the first step in starting your process, your progression towards performing some spatial analysis in QGIS. Um, 
I'm also going to be loading another data set. So I'm going back to Data Source Manager. And instead of a vector file, I'm going to be loading a, a CSV file, which is also known as a delimited text file. Um, probably in subsequent tutorials, we're going to be talking a lot about data types. But for today, uh, the first data I loaded is a vector file, which is known as, well, which is characterized with lines, shapes, and polygons. Um, now I'm trying to load uh, a CSV file, which is also known as a delimited text file. So all I just have to do is click on this three dot here. Sometimes it's always Eden to go to the URL part and I'll navigate to the part where I have the data. I'm loading the Nigeria water points data set. Uh, this data set was downloaded from grid three uh, data portal. Uh, the link to the, source, to the source of the data is also in the chat if you care to follow suit with me in this tutorial. So once you click on the data and you open it, there are some things that you need to actually set before you add. Um, if it is not automatically set for you, uh, you need to specify the X field because it's a point data set. You need to specify the X field and the Y field, which is known as the coordinates. So in this data, we have the X and the Y. Sometimes it's also called the longitude and the latitude. Uh, QGIS tries to detect some of those fields in the data and auto fill it for you. But in scenarios where it doesn't, you need to specify it. And this would help you ensure that your data is loaded and displayed appropriately in the right uh, geolocation that is supposed to be. One other information that you need to pay close attention to is the uh, coordinate reference system. So currently I am using EPSG 4326 World uh, Geographical System 84 and basically this is the coordinates in which the data was collected and that is why I'm using it. So it's a coordinate for Nigeria uh, and it is based on the data was collected. So that is why it is important for you when you're downloading data online to try to read a lot of information about the metadata, metadata information about the data to understand the coordinates of which the data was collected because it is relevant for you to indicate and specify that here. Um, if, for, for instance, in your case, you're trying to do this and this is not preluded for you, you can always come to this button at the right hand side to search for the coordinate system which uh, the data was collected with. There are a number of coordinate systems. Again, um, coordinate system in itself is a broad topic and probably we'll be covering that in another, in another tutorial. But for now, um, if you're using a specific data set um, as downloaded by myself, you can just look for this specific coordinate that I've used here and try to load it. Once you click on, once those settings are done and you click on add, the data will be added. Now, one thing you should be very careful about on, in QGIS with is once you click on add, this model doesn't automatically close. It probably gives you the impression that nothing was done, but you need to click on close yourself to go back to the interface, the default interface, and be sure that your data was rightly loaded. In some scenarios, your data might not be loaded because of some errors or the other, and you wouldn't know until you get to this default interface to be sure and see for yourself that your data was loaded. If it is loaded, it will be indicated in the legend, in the layer panel, and also visually displayed in the location. In scenarios where you've zoomed out of the location where your data is, um, displayed in the geolocation where your data is displayed. This is an infinite, infinity, uh, uh, infinity space. 
mind you, spatial space. So um, sometimes you can just zoom and you can't find your data. You just realize you can't find your data again, just like I did now. So what you do, do not panic. Your data is still in is still within the uh, spatial spatial setting, spatial location. It's, it should be. Just right click on the data in the layer panel, and there's this option there that says zoom to layer. Once you click on that, it brings your data back into focus. You can always do the zoom, zoom in and zoom out, which uh, you can always also do use some of this function here. I'm using my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. That's why you can't see me clicking on anything. Um, play around with your mouse and see how it looks and how it feels. So quickly, now we've loaded the, our data set. These are the two data sets I'm going to be using for this today's tutorial. Now we've loaded our data set. The next thing we want to do is just do a simple um, selection. So we want to select water points that are that fall within a specific administrative boundaries in Nigeria. Um, one good one standard practice for for you to for you to imbibe when using QGIS is especially when you load new data set into your uh, into your uh, project is for you to look at the attributes table and for you to get to the attribute table attribute information of your of each data you need to right click on the data and search for open attributes table it's kind of eating but i'm sure when you scroll down you get to see it this is it open attribute table so i'm looking at the i'm trying to look for the look at the attribute table of the water points and Ah, this is the attribute table so you can expand it um, it's a floating widget so you can expand it and just like you can see here these are the attributes information in, that comes with this data set you have the timestamp editor of the data uh, word name local government name LG code state name and some other information like that. So I'm going to close this and also look at the attribute information of the boundary. So similar thing, right click, right click on your mouse and you will see a lot of uh, functions that you can, options available to you. And amongst them, you have the attributes table, open attribute table. So for the geo boundary, Nigeria admin one boundary, um, the attribute information is shape name, shape ISO, shape ID, shape group, and shape type. So pay close attention to the shape name because we're going to be using it for our analysis. So remember, what we are trying to achieve is to select water points that fall within specified admin boundary. So for us to do that, I think this is where QGIS gains its unique relevance, I think, as compared to ArcGIS Pro, um, which some of you might know and we will cover in some other tutorial. Uh, don't worry about that for now. But in QGIS, you can do some fancy things like uh, mask out the boundaries that you don't you are not particular about so you can focus on the boundaries that you really want to perform analysis with and i'm doing that here by right clicking on the layer boundary layer in the layers panel and going to what we the function the feature we said we call that that is called filter so with the filter function um it opens a widget where uh, you can perform some quick um, query builder um, and use some expression to perform some filter. So in this case, we want to filter by the shape name. So once you double click on it, it starts creating a, an expression. So you double click on the filter 
on the shape name. Remember, this is the attribute information we just saw when we right click and open attribute table. So the attribute information is what we're trying to use to filter the data sets in this query builder. So when I double click on, <clears throat> this is the filter expression here. It's been populated manually as you perform some functions here. So I can delete this. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to filter by shape name. So once I double click on this, it puts the shape name here. Then I can now say shape name. Remember, we're trying to we're trying to create an expression. Shape name equals to <clears throat> because I don't know the the values present in the shape name. I need to view them. So when, you, when I can go back here and click once here, and sh and come to the value section and say all. So it's going to show me all the values in the shape name, available in the shape name. So I can specify the values that I want to, I want to use. And I'll just say shape name equals to, let me, if I double click on Abuja. So in the expression, it says shape name equals to Abuja Federal Capital Territory. So this alone is an expression. And what you can try to do is, once you've created an expression, to confirm if your expression is valid and will run, you can test it by clicking on test. This will process the, process the expression and confirm to you that um, you're getting the results. In this case, because shape name equals to Abuja and Abuja appears once, it tells you that the where clause returns one row. So it has processed it and it has given you feedback, which is okay. You can also clear, you can also clear the expression if you don't want to use this expression anymore, you want to create a new expression. Remember, uh, because you've tested it, it has actually performed the analysis behind. It has performed this, the filter behind. Um, that's another, in another a way to confirm that your confirm that your expression is working um, so you can all as well clear and once you clear it clears that expression and also reverts back to this default uh, default uh, appearance I'm going to cancel this and probably turn off the water point for now so we can see clearly um, and go back to filter. So now, remember, double click on shape name and it appears here. You can click on equals to, um, to, to provide the value shape name will be equals to, click on shape name once, uh, click on all in the value section and select the, double click on the value you want to um, use. So I double click on Federal Capital Territory. But that's not only all. I can create like a complex expression. And in this case, I want to create like more a complex expression, so to say. Um, so I want shape name to be equal to Abuja and not just Abuja. I want it to be equal to another administrative uh, boundary. Remember, we're trying to select two administrative boundary. So this is the first exp exp expression, shape name equals to Abuja uh, or so I'm going to use the all parameter operator I'm going to use I'm going to select double click on shape name again shape name equals uh, I'm trying to get Lagos so you can always search for the value that you're looking for so I'll double click on Lagos now so if I stretch this a little bit you can see from the expression that what I've done is I've said shape name equals to Abuja Federal Capital Territory or shape name equals to Lagos and once I run the test it has returned two rows I can click on OK that's what I wanted and I click on OK here and it's done so now I have 
two administrative boundary alone. Remember, the full data set is still there. It's just QGIS as hidden that data set and you can use this to perform geospatial analysis without using the full data sets. Even though you have the full data set, you filtered out the full data set to have just the one you're, you're keen about and, perf and use it to perform analysis um, to achieve some results. So now that we have the two, the two administrative boundaries, um, I'm, go I'm going to turn on the, the, the water point. Probably because they look, the, the color, the default color that QGIS has given them is brown and brown. They look similar. To probably be able to differentiate them would change the color, the symbology. Um, to do that, you just have to right click, go to properties and go to symbology so in symbology yeah you, you have a single symbol here the single symbol is shown by default here and for you to change the color you just come here and click on any of the color you can just pick a random color in the color picker and because well i don't know i just want to use something yellow so it's distinctive enough so now we've changed the color of the water point and there we are now you can see this is lagos and is pan to the top a little bit i see a boja now what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the administrative boundary to select select um, the water points that falls within that administrative boundary. So for us to do that, um, there's what we call the processing toolbox on the right pan here. Um, in your case, this might not come out by default and you have to bring it out. So you should uh, probably, if you want to bring this out, probably we close it now um you can go to processing and click on toolbox and voila it becomes visible so this toolbox is very helpful on a lot of scenarios for performing a lot of analysis uh, and like many other people that use qgis we never remember where or where the, the function we're, we're looking for or the tool we're looking for is in, in this sub subcategory. So the search button is always helpful. Now, what we're looking for is a select by location. So if once you start typing the first word of that two, um, QGIS filters out all the tools that it has with that first few words and presents it to you here. So select by location is what we're trying to do. Um, and right that now we found it, select by location. So when we double click on select by location, it brings out the selection pane. And now, now that we are here, what we're trying to do is select the water points that fall within the administrative boundary of Abuja and Lagos. This is select. Now we have a select from because we want to select the water point. We're going to tick on that. Now, how do we want to select? Do we want to select intersect, touch, and all that? We might not be able to cover what all this mean in itself in details, but we're just going to use the intersect selection option here, and we're selecting from. And we're selecting by comparing the feature width. With the administrative boundaries. Now. To be sure that this is on creating a new selection. Because if you already have an existing selection and it is adding to the current selection, it's going to combine with the existing selection. So. Be sure that this is on creating new selection. So once you have this settings 
uh, like this. Uh, you click on run and your selection is done. So once we click on close now, uh, the selection is done, but because of the color of the water points, we can't see the selection. So I'm going to change the color of the water points back to uh, blue. Let's change it to blue. Good. So now you can clearly see that all the color of the water points are blue, but because this, there are some that are selected, currently selected, um, the the selection color indicates are uh, indicated with yellow. So now, if you notice, you've selected all the points that fall within the administrative boundary of Lagos and Abuja. So. Now, the next logical step is what, what do we do next? Now, the question is, what do we do next? So the next logical step is to create a new data set that holds just the selected feature. And to do that, you right click on the water point and uh, you can export or go to export and click on save selected feature remember save selected feature so this is going to save only the feature that has been selected and so we're saving it as an Esri shape file you can be careful to if you put a name here IGS is going to throw an error because it needs a directory path so most times just click on these three dots on the side um, browse to the location where you want to store it in my case I'm putting it in the uh, download folder because I just don't want to store it in somewhere sensible uh, well you can store it anywhere you feel like you want to store it so water point Lagos and Abuja so remember it's a shape file click on it so can you see IGS automatically populates that URL for you because if you put just the, the name you want to save it with, it's going to throw up an error. In the format, you can set, specify the format you want to save it as um, selecting Esri shape file, which is a standard um, format that you can transfer from one spatial uh, to, to another, from one spatial software to another. Um, also, this is where it's, this is where it is another thing that is important. I have specified that the coordinates reference system that this file should be saved with is this. So if I save this file now and somebody else wants to open the file, they need to be, they need to re remember you need to, you need to make them aware that this file was created with this coordinate system and this is why metadata information is always important and relevant so i think those are the basic information that you need to be aware of for now um, you can kind of ignore all the settings for now and leave them as defaults uh, one tricky one is this if you take this it's going to add the new data set into your map file into your map if you untick it, it's, going, it's not going to add it. But because we want to add it, we're going to tick it. So we click on OK. And voila, there's a confirmation here that everything was good. So if we turn off this layer now, you see we have just performed a selection. And we've just created a new data set with only water points that exist within Lagos in Abuja. Now, this is one of the many ways you can use QGIS to start performing quick analysis and uh, informing a lot of decision based on spatial data uh, available publicly um, that you can use, utilize. Um, I'm going to stop here for today and come back to 
um, proceed proceed with some further analysis in some later tutorial. Thank you for listening and see you next see you again.